Hello and welcome to Shorts in Psychology. Today's video is another one about classical conditioning and the difference between acquisition and performance in this type of learning. We're going to use Pavlov's dog experiments as the illustrative example to explain the difference between acquisition and performance in classical conditioning. In these experiments, the dogs produced an automatic and reflexive saliva response when presented with food making the food the unconditioned stimulus and the dog's saliva response the unconditioned response. Initially, the bell produced no response in the dogs. It was a neutral stimulus. However, over time and by being paired with the food, the dogs started to produce saliva at the sound of the bell. Thus, the bell becomes the conditioned stimulus and the dog's salivating at the sound of the bell is the conditioned response. Now that we've established what the components of classical conditioning are in Pavlov's dog experiments, we can distinguish the difference between acquisition and performance. Acquisition refers to the learning that occurs during the classical conditioning process. It is when the conditioned response is being acquired as an association is forming between the two unrelated stimuli. At this stage, the conditioned stimulus is still neutral as it elicits no response if presented by itself. During the acquisition phase, pairings of the unconditioned and neutral stimuli lead to increased learning. The dog is learning to form an association between the meat and the sound of the bell. As a result, the conditioned response will be acquired. Once classical conditioning has occurred, the association between the two stimuli has been learned. The neutral stimulus is now referred to as the conditioned stimulus, as it can be presented by itself and elicits the conditioned response. This is known as the performance stage, as the learner is performing the conditioned response. In Pavlov's experiments, the dogs salivated at the sound of the bell without the food being present. Let's practice explaining and applying these concepts with some past exam questions. Let's start with a question that just requires you to describe these two phases of classical conditioning. Pause the video while you attempt the question. Remember that in short answer questions, you can write your answer in dot points if you'd like to. There's also no need to rewrite the question. Just get straight to the point and define acquisition and performance. The acquisition stage involves pairing two stimuli together, the unconditioned stimulus and a neutral stimulus, in order to form an association between them. The neutral stimulus becomes a conditioned stimulus that elicits the conditioned response due to its learned association with the unconditioned stimulus. In the performance phase, the neutral stimulus has become the conditioned stimulus and elicits the conditioned response without the need for the unconditioned stimulus to be present. Here is another practice question you can try. Pause the video while you attempt it. It's important to ensure you answer questions like this in the context of the scenario. A general definition of acquisition and performance would not be awarded all of the allocated marks. Therefore, the answer should look something like this. Acquisition. During this phase, the unconditioned stimulus, the loud noise, is paired with the white rat, which is a neutral stimulus. Little Albert will start to form an association between the loud noise and the white rat, so the white rat will become the conditioned stimulus that elicits a conditioned response. Performance. During this phase, the white rat has now become the conditioned stimulus and elicits the conditioned response of crying without the presence of the loud noise. A couple of final reminders before we finish. Firstly, make sure you write terms like unconditioned and conditioned stimulus in full the first time. After that, it's fine to abbreviate it to UCS and CS. It's important to demonstrate to the marker that you know what those terms stand for. Students frequently get their terms for classical conditioning muddled up, so markers can't give you the benefit of the doubt and assume you know the correct meaning if you only abbreviate. Secondly, carefully reread your answer. It is really easy to mix up terminology, including stimulus and response, conditioned and unconditioned, or even using the word controlled instead of conditioned. I hope this video has simplified the difference between acquisition and performance and increased your confidence in explaining these concepts. Please let me know if you have requests for videos explaining other concepts. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for another Shorts in Psychology.